Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Welcome back to my shop. Uh, today we're going to do a rebuild and overhaul of a Penn Senator 4.0. You might remember seeing this one in the video that I did with the 3.0 showing you the differences in the two wheels. And at that time you saw that there was uh, old line on this one and it was heavily tarnished. <clears throat> I uh, took the time to clean this one up before uh, we went into the repair. There's still some uh, some of that tarnish showing. I'm not quite sure what it is, but there's a um, almost a golding effect. I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's lubrication that uh, leaked out, dried, and then became a varnish on the metal pieces. But I was able to clean up most of it, just uh, not all of it. So if you want to see how to clean tarnish corroded uh, metal parts on pen reels. There's another video on my site where I've done that, and I'm pretty happy with the results of this. There was a lot of uh, elbow grease, a lot of steel wool, a lot of uh, metal polish, and still couldn't get it all off. But, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you, you can only be as good as uh, the products, and in this case, we are where we are. I'm going to start by uh, removing the handle assembly on the gear side plate in order to do the repair and rebuild. I have a uh, aftermarket... Um, wrench. It uses the large size of the uh, the pen uh, reel nuts that goes for the 4.0 and the 6.0 Senators. Uh, if you have the wrench that came with uh, the smaller models, uh, that will not fit the, uh, the nut. So uh, you need to have the right uh, wrench in order to take that off. If you don't, I suppose that you could use pliers or something. Just be careful not to uh, ruin that nut as you're doing that. Okay, so the handle comes off, the star drag nut comes off. Two washers here. Uh, these washers are um, asymmetrical. They have a, uh, a concave to them. They can be set up three ways. This would be uh, the least uh, tension. Uh, this would be the middling tension if you go face to face. And then if you go opposite sides, where there's the space on the outer rims that would give you the most uh, uh, play. So I'm taking off the collar and now I have access to the full gear side. Uh, there's the gear sides connected by five uh, cross posts and a uh, wheel seat. The screws in the cross post are longer than the screws in the real seat. So you need to know that when you go to reinstall uh, the side plates. So I'll just take out one just show you an example if it was done properly. I trust this reel was done properly. I haven't seen this reel before but uh, you'll see that uh, that there is a difference in screw size and the reason for that is you don't want this uh, you don't want to use the long one in the reel seat where it can stick out and grab the line so uh, so you just need to make a mental note of that. This is a good time to tell you if you don't work on a reel like this that uh, stop and take pictures uh, as you disassemble the reel, it'll give you an indication of where uh, where the parts came from and the sequence that they came from. Uh, if you haven't done that, then uh, you can always go back to a reel schematic, which you can find online. As a matter of fact, the reel schematic for this one is available through penparts.com. Uh, you can go and search on the uh, Senator line and then the 4.0 you can select and it'll give you a um, a real schematic which has got the blowout of the uh, the pieces and parts as they go. It's also a place where if you're working on a reel like this and you find that you need drags or something you can put the parts through there. Okay so uh, this is the business side of the reel and it looks much like any other pen uh, reel. The Long Beach, the Jigmaster, the Senator lines they all kind of look the same. It's just a matter of uh, the size of the pieces and parts and drags. Uh, this one has a bearing on each side, uh, one bearing here, and this is a bearing on the side plate here. Uh, so this one makes it spin easier than the 3.0 Senator, which does not have the bearings. The 3.0 is a little bit uh, smaller in, in diameter of spool length and capacity as well. So I oil bearings, so the first uh, part of this service is to oil both, it, you know, both that bearing there and the one on the side plate here. Uh, you know, we'll wait for that. You can put a drop of oil in through here, but you can also do it when we remove the, uh, the gear side plate to work on that. Otherwise, this is clean. If it wasn't clean, you could take a paper towel and, and clean out debris or whatever may be in there. But that's all that's required on this side uh, is a little bit of oil. We're gonna go ahead and put the spool back here and set that assembly off to the side. 
All right, so when you're working on the, the 3 high speed, the 4 this gear does not clear the metal ring, so the metal ring needs to come off the trim. There's a little bit of oil and stuff behind there, so I'm just going to, uh, to wipe that down. Get rid of some of the contamination there. You notice I do wear a latex glove on my non-working hand, and that's just to, uh, to keep some of those oils off of this. All right, we're going to start by removing the bridge. The bridge is connected by these four screws. You can see where they come through on this side. I'm going to cup my hand as I do that because there is a spring that holds the anti-reverse dog on this one. And uh, as you get to loosening up the bridge, if you don't, uh, don't hold it like I'm holding it, that spring can shoot out. And if that spring shoots out and you can't find it, uh, You've got to postpone your repair while you go to penparts.com to go get a replacement one. So uh, I would encourage you to do as I'm doing, or at least forewarn you that if you're not going to do it this way, that there is a spring that has a tendency to go boing. And if it goes boing, it may cost you uh, time and redoing your project. Okay, once those four screws are uh, uh, backed off. I push the bridge assembly through. That's why I'm trying to capture that little spring. And uh, here's the spring here. You can see it's shot into the palm of my hand. Very, very tough to see there, but it's just a small spring that uh, I'm going to put into what else you might notice in the background there, which is a parts bucket. I always use a parts bucket or a tray for all of the small pieces and parts so I know where to go on reassembly for that. This happens to be the bottom of the milk jug. Works just fine. Uh, Alright, so we were able to take that off. The uh, screws are coming through the other side plate now after they've been relaxed. On these four bridge plate screws you'll notice that there's two different types of screws here. There's a partially threaded screw and a fully threaded screw. The fully threaded screws go on the bottom. The partially threaded screws go up through the spring assembly on the free spool release, which is this assembly. That's what we're going to take off next. You push down on that uh, the gear. You make sure that the free spool is up top and simply unhook that. That'll give you access to the, the gearing. Uh, we'll take that collar and the, the pinion, uh, the spool gear off. We're also going to remove those two springs that uh, provide the tension on that free spool. That gives us access to that back burring. And uh, before I go there, I'm just going to take a uh, cotton swab. There's a little bit of some built up grease in here. I'm just going to clear that so that that doesn't impede performance in the future. That's fine. And then I'm going to take the oil again. It's, in this case, it's a real X. Oh, oh, put some oil on that back burring. Then I like to take a, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver and just spin that bearing just to make sure it spins and uh, that uh, we're okay there. And then the drag stack came off when I removed the bridge here. That's not a problem. We're just going to pull that drag stack out this way. And since we're going to repair that drag stack, we're going to go uh, go ahead and work on that bridge anyway. So I'm going to re reinstall this piece right away just to get it done and get it out of the way so I don't lose those pieces and parts. The two springs go in the indentation. In this case, there's a little bit of grime on that collar, so I'm going to go take a piece of steel wool and just uh, just a couple of quick scrubs on it will clean that up. Same thing, do it out on the other side, build off some of that dry grease there. Use my paper towel to clean that. And then the lubrication for moving parts is a blue grease. In this case, I use a pen wheel grease. Grab a little screwdriver here, set that out of the way, and grab some, some blue grease to, to put on both sides of that collar. Then I'm going to take that uh, spool gear, I'm going to check to make sure it's clean. It is. That all the teeth are in alignment, not bent out of it. Uh, and then we're just going to go put a little bit of blue grease on that one as well. You don't have to, to over grease these. Uh, they will work their way through in terms of greasing as the reel is spun. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and put that back in here. And it goes on to the, the springs that we reset back into the, uh, the recesses there. And then we're going to grab that top collar, which is the transition piece. And we're set up on the free spool assembly. Then. So 
back to the main uh, bridge and see a little, there's a little tarnish here. I'm just going to use that steel roll again to remove the tarnish. This is, uh, you want to make sure this is smooth because this is where your anti-reverse dog uh, works off of. So if there's built up grease and grime, it may affect the ability to, uh, to have that operate properly. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Once that's there, we'll go over and do the main drag stack. And the main drag stack is a six drag uh, system. It has the, uh, the core and it has the bottom drag sitting in there. It, then it goes and it alternates metal fabric, metal, fabric, oh, I guess we got an eight drag system here, that's okay. Uh, the concept is the same. We have two eared washers, as you can tell. They're spaced in between three washers that uh, do not have the ear on them. They all stack up on this uh, pinion gear, which is why it's called a drag stack. And here we go, we're gonna put them on. These have, uh, these are kind of a Teflonish uh, nature. They just need a little bit of oil on it. There's plenty of oil on this one, so we don't need to do anything. So we will just go reinstall this stack then. It goes metal, then it goes the fabric. And make sure that they properly seat. Metal fabric, then we go with the first of the eared washers back to a fabric. And again, I've laid these out here. Uh, again, it's a good place to take pictures if you don't know uh, how these things sit in order. In this case, I'm familiar with this reel, so uh, I've been doing this for 20 years now. I almost can do them by rote, but it uh, doesn't hurt to have that either the pictures or the schematics. All right, this is reset then, and what we'll do now is we'll reinstall this with the anti-reverse. The anti-reverse is this odd looking piece here, and again, it's got a little cavity where that spring sits, and what happens is that rides on the back teeth of the pinion gear. It's hard to see in this uh, one, it's better to see this way, that there's the teeth back here. This interlocks with those teeth to, to stop the reel from uh, backpedaling and then it'll ride off of that when the wheel goes forward. Okay, so I'm going to go put this back in order here. We're going to press down on the spool bearing, spool gear. We're going to bring that drag stack in. Quarter of a turn, just enough to hold the gear down and hold the back plate while you go to assemble. The threaded screw goes on the bottom in that corner. That anti-reverse gets set, and you have that cavity there which takes the spring that I warned you about in terms of shooting out. You have to be careful with that on reinstalling. You need to make sure that it's properly seated as it is here. If not, it can go spray out again. And then once you do that, you want to complete the rotation of that bridge plate until you see the back of that screw ready to come through. And then just a brief turn there. Don't go and tighten it all the way down until you've set all of the others. So the next one up is a partially threaded screw which belongs up top. We'll go ahead and uh, turn that one or, one or two turns just to make sure that it's grabbed the bridge plate. Come back and put the fully threaded one on the bottom. You'll notice I'm doing an X pattern here. That's just to keep the proper torsion on the bridge. We'll go back and tighten those in just a moment. And then we're going to go ahead and put that uh, that last one up top on the, the other side here. And since we're complete now, I'm not, I'm not grabbing that, which is why uh, we would want to uh, to keep the proper tension on these. That one did not uh, seat properly. So I'm going to go back these others off. They're, they're tightly engineered. This is a common, common problem, not problem, but it's a common occurrence. For some reason I'm just not able to push that through. I guess it's just not strong enough on that. It looks like it should just pop right through there, but for some reason, we're going to take a pin and make sure that we're lined there. We're not catching a, uh, 
a spring or anything. It might be that we've just catching that spring a little bit there. Let's give it another try there. So one of the people that I know said that uh, when you repair reels, there's a couple of things you need. You need uh, a good set of tools, pliers, screwdrivers, etc. You need a, um, a knowledge of what it is that you're doing. And the last thing you need is a good sense of humor. And I think that uh, I fully understand why that is. Because every now and then it tests your patience and it tests your sense of humor in terms of why you just can't get these done properly. So. Okay. All right, so once we, we tighten down all those bridge screws, that's what we're in the process of completing now. We will go ahead and we will reset the, uh, the drag stack and the rest of the uh, collars. And we're basically done at this point as we've repaired uh, them all. So, okay, so the screws are all tightened. We turn it just to give it a quick test. I'm going to reinstall that side ring, beauty ring. To do that, you want to make sure that you put that, uh, that little retainer in there, which belongs to the uh, harness, if you're wearing a harness for this reel. Line them up accordingly. This is not properly aligned. Okay, once we line that up, we can press down on that. <coughs> Last thing I like to do is just put a little bit of grease on this uh, spool shaft here. And then I also like to put a little bit on that transition piece in the back here. That's the one piece you can't lube until you put the, the bridge back on. Also, I, I throw a little bit up top here on that idle cam. And there's only one other piece that requires lubrication. We'll get to that in just a moment here. Okay, so once we do that, we're going to bring this reel into alignment so that we have the ability to put the screws back on the post. Remember that there's short screws that go in the reel seat, three of them. Long screws that go in the side posts. If you didn't remember that earlier, go back and look at your pictures. You'll see if those pick, if your screws are sticking out of the reel seat, you use the wrong ones uh, when you do reassembly there. All right, I'm going to the bottom now. So I'm kind of working northeast, southwest. Short screw in the bottom here. Take a long screw to the other post side now. So the Penn Senator 4.0 is a great reel. It's meant for heavier fish. <clears throat> in this case, uh, 75 pound class fish. For uh, tuna, shark, up here on the north coast, uh, northeast coast. That's kind of what we do. Uh, you can use it on big bluefish, although the 3 0 is plenty for the big bluefish up this way for fighting. This reel uh, typically is used uh, with monofilament line. That's what you saw if you looked at it before. It had a 30 pound test monofilament on it. Uh, it could be, I guess, it could be used with braid. It, it would certainly take an awful lot of braid. Uh, it can also be used with um, wire, although uh, this, so the spool on this one is a very heavy duty spool, so it would accommodate the, uh, the wire line should that be needed. Uh, most of the time on a wire line what I'm seeing is somebody's going to be using a Pen 49, which is the narrow channel super uh, mariner reel. Uh, I like that one if you're going to be trolling wire line for a shark or something. That one has the, uh, the back pedal switch, uh, you know, which puts the uh, anti-reverse dog in neutral. And uh, that enables you to manually fight the fish and save your drives. Okay, so if you remember now, we're kind of down to the short strokes in this game. The collar goes back on. Those two washers go back on. The star drag goes back on next. 
Last piece of uh, lubrication then is just a squirt of oil onto the pinion gear itself. The handle goes on next. Remember that the handle's got a handle nut that's the bigger handle nut. If you've uh, used your wrench, you need the big size wrench. If you want to buy that wrench, it's available on penparts.com. Uh, I've mentioned them a couple of times today. I do not work for them, but it is a great source of pieces, parts, and in some cases you can get the uh, that blue grease there. You can get the Real X oil through pen parts. You can also get this, which is an aftermarket wrench, uh, which is available through them as well. Uh, basically, the pricing is is pretty good. Uh, everything, and then probably about five or six dollars to uh, to ship your purchase back to you. So. Uh, just tightening down the set screw on that now, and we're done. So, uh, so that's how you go and uh, you uh, work the uh, the pen 4-0. Yeah, works well. Okay, this is uh, Dennis with Second Hand Tackle. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Uh, if you want to see more of these, please subscribe. Thanks again for viewing.